So as you saw from that really, really cool intro, today I'm gonna to be comparing Intel's Core i7 6800K 6 core 12 thread, a behemoth of a CPU to AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 chip. Now before you destroy your keyboards in the comments section below, I'm aware that the 6800K uh, is around about a year old now. However, if Intel hadn't have rushed their X299 launch, the 6800K and 1700 from Ryzen would be direct competitors. The X299 launch only provides minimal increases in performance anyway, so I just thought it would be really interesting to put these head to head, especially given that the i7-6800K is a CPU that I currently edit all my videos on and that I'm going to be upgrading to this Ryzen 7 1700. So let's jump into some in-depth benchmarks from synthetic and real world gaming and see which one reigns supreme. We'll dive in straight away with the gaming benchmarks, an area Ryzen 7 initially fell short on launch. First up is Dirt Rally, I ran the game on the high settings preset at 1080p and ran the game's inbuilt benchmarking tool. The systems used both have XFX RX 480s and 16GB of identical DDR4 2133MHz memory. The 6800K takes the win here by quite a margin with an average FPS of 128, minimum of 86 and max of 179. 0.75. This compared with the Ryzen 7 1700's minimum of 80 frames per second, average of 105, and high of just 137 FPS. Quite a leap by the Intel chip here. Does this mean Ryzen's initial gaming woes have not been solved? No. Games such as Dirt Rally love single threaded performance, and with a base of just 3 GHz on this Ryzen 7 1700 chip, a loss was surely inevitable. A 7700K at 4 or 4.5 GHz would beat out any of Intel's high end X99 or X299 chips. Moving on to Project Cars, it's a different story with Project Cars much better at utilising the CPU horses available to it. The Intel side gives us a minimum of 61, max of 89, and average of 71, whereas AMD's 1700 chip has a lower minimum of 56 but a higher max of 95 and marginally higher average of 72.2 frames per second. This is really promising for the red team and shows how the Ryzen chip despite being clocked at a lower clock speed of 3 compared to 3.4 gigahertz is not actually hampering its performance. Moving on to 3D Mark Firestrike, Intel takes the win with a score of 11,630 points compared to Ryzen's 11276, a 2-3% lead on the Intel side and once again attributed to that stronger single threaded performance. One way to certainly get around this would be to overclock at the Ryzen 7 1700 chip which is something I'll be covering in a detailed follow up video to this. Seeing how far you can push Ryzen and what performance that gives, you need to remember 3D Mark's Fire Strike is quite single threaded heavy and more of a graphics test than a CPU test. Moving on to benchmarks, it's better to simulate professional applications. First up is Cinebench. With both CPUs at stock speeds, the Ryzen 7 chip pulls out a nice lead at 1,391 points compared to Intel's 1,182. Where this really gets interesting though is when you overclock the Ryzen chip to 3.9 GHz, it pulls out a tremendous score of 1,792, a number which appears to scale perfectly. Let me explain. 3.9 GHz is exactly a 30% clock speed improvement over 3 GHz and 1792 is a 29% increase over the initial Ryzen score of 1391 at that 3 GHz. The overclock and leverage here really is something I'm excited to explore and the scalability is really really intriguing. Next up is CPU-Z. Uh, Intel boasts a single threaded score of 466.3 and a multi-threaded score of 3482.9. The AMD side loses out on the single threaded core as expected and by quite a margin at 368.6 at stock speeds but the multi-threaded core shows this chip's muscle again at 3960.1, a really healthy win. The final test is a head-to-head -head race to transcode a 1.7GB GH5 file filmed at 4K 30 frames per second with the .mov ProRes codec down to H.264 with a bitrate of 10 megabits per second for a much smaller file size in Adobe's media encoder CC2017. The Ryzen chip renders in 2 minutes and 55 seconds and the i7-6800K in 3 minutes and 20. While seemingly a small difference, that's very very scalable in what could save you 10 or 20 minutes on much longer exports of longer form content, not to mention superior timeline scrubbing leading to faster and more efficient editing. 
It begs the question for anyone not impressed by the single threaded performance of the CPU, are gamers really buying an 8 core 16 thread CPU or is it people using all 8 cores in apps such as Premiere Pro, After Effects or Blender? I'll let you decide on that one. Now it's great to see that Ryzen 7 CPU really really pulling its weight and taking the lead over its Intel competitors. It's also fantastic to see uh, two, three months on the optimizations that game and software developers have made to these new CPUs. On launch it was inevitable that we're going to be teething issues and slight performance glitches that were going to affect this CPU, especially since no chips before have been made on this architecture and AMD hadn't released anything there end in literally years. When you look at its lower retail price and lower cost of motherboards, Ryzen 7 is an incredibly credible threat and in my opinion the better option over Intel's X99 or X299 CPUs. Make sure to smash that like button for more videos like this. I'm going to be pitting a Ryzen 7 CPU, Ryzen 5 sorry, against an i5 CPU to see if it's a similar case there. Uh, but as always, we'll see you in the next GeekoWatt video.